What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Happy with the box. What was in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Give me the gun. Patience. Hey, this is your friend Dr. Dredd, and I am back with episode number two of What's in the Box. Hey, roll that film. Welcome. Foolish mortals. So, I was just up in my attic, and uh, this is what the show's about. It's stuff that I have accumulated, accumulated, accumulated over the years. Uh, I'm a, I collect stuff, and it helps if it's weird or unusual. So, uh, came across this box right here. Box. Nobody was injured. Whew. So, where was I? So, I came across this box right here. A little dusty, let me tell you. So, are you ready, patients? Let's see what's in the box. Ah, some books. Uh, these books uh, take me back. Uh, they take me back to when I was a little Dr. Dread. And probably what set me on the path of my Dreadism and my obsession with horror movies. And uh, it was all part of it. You know, uh, the actual fascination with horror probably started when I was like five years old. So this was a little bit later. And this is like when I'm 10, 11 years old. So, uh, you know, first up, let's look at this one here. So, Movie Monsters by Alan Ormsby. Alan Ormsby. Uh, look the name up. The man is multi -talented. Children shouldn't play with dead things. Uh, Hugo, the man of a thousand faces. And this book. And this book was really cool. Uh, when I was little, it, uh, it had like skits on how to put on your own little horror show. It had makeup tips and a brief history of the monsters and pictures. It had pictures. Pictures are important for me. Uh, <laughs> this isn't the original copy that I've owned. I came across this at a Monster Bash convention. Monster Bash Convention. It's held uh, near Pittsburgh every uh, every June. But uh, I got it for a good price. I think I paid $5 for it. And it's uh, from 1975. 1975. It's, uh, I believe it was a Scholastic book. Probably got it at the, uh, the book fair. Up next. Another book. Beat the Werewolf. Uh... 1976, and this is also a scholastic book. I was probably in fifth grade, I guess, maybe. I don't know. But uh, no, once again, not the original book that I had back then. Uh, I got this on eBay, and I paid a little bit more for it than because of the sentimental value it had to me. I probably paid 20 bucks for it, somewhere around there, maybe 15. But uh. Not too many pictures. Uh, pictures are really creepy, though. They're really creepy. They're good. Uh, I remember sharing some of the stuff in this book, some of the uh, facts that they had in here. Facts. Facts about werewolves. Uh, with my mom. And uh, in this book, there's a method by which a mere human can smear himself with, uh, I don't know, uh, some sort of grease or wolf ointment, maybe baby fat, I, I, you know, bacon fat, I don't know, and uh, dance out in the moonlight, put on a belt, and recite this spell to become a werewolf, and my mom was shocked at that, she, uh, she didn't like that, not at all, okay, let's move up to another book here, another book, and this one was, I figured this was, this, when I was, you know, 
probably sixth grade. And in the middle school, they had silent reading. That was one of the classes. You read, and then you had to do a little report on the books that you read. And uh, I thought this was an adult. This, this is like my introduction to the world of grown-ups. And, you know, even though I had books about monsters that had a lot of pictures in them, this, this book, probably back in sixth grade, really sparked a love of reading in me. Uh, the book is dated 1963, and the front cover is by Frank Frenzetta. Once again, not the original book that I had back then because that was torn and tattered by the time I was done rereading it. Uh, but I got this off eBay, and I think I paid eh, probably seven fifty for it, right around that neighborhood and uh, was very happy to have it again. It does not look like the spine's like excellent condition. It doesn't even look like it was red. Moving on. What do we have in the box? What do we have in the box? Uh, let's not do that one. Ah, here we go. This here. This here. I've had this. Don't drop it. Especially not on camera, I would cry. I've had this probably, uh, I don't know. I don't know what my earliest memory of this is. I know that we had it back when we lived in uh, an apartment in uh, a local town. And I was somewhere between the ages of five and eight. Probably five and seven. So let's say five or six years old I've had this. It's a Batman mug. It's a... Uh, 1966, I believe it is. It's a Fire King mug. There's a picture on the back. A Batman, like the comic book, uh, comic book covers. And then on the front, it's a picture of Batman, and he's like in fighting stances. The pow, boom, bang. Moving on. Some more glassware. Uh, this was also a Monster Bash find. Uh, they have a large dealer room. And, uh, you know, if you see something you really like there in the dealer room and you see it when they open the dealer room on Friday, if you really like it, get it then. If you're not too sure about it and you don't think it's going to be snagged up, you wait until the last day, Sunday, and uh, because prices drop. Uh, this glass probably cost us about two bucks, between two and five, uh, me and Mrs. Dredd. It's a, we're both King Kong fans. This is from the 1970s movie, uh, 1976, King Kong. And it's a Coke promotional glass. And uh, that's a nice visual of Kong there, breaking chains and, and whatnot. <laughs> we go from King Kong to this cute little troll. And uh, it's uh, made by my form. It, there's no space. It's M-Y-F-O-R-M. There's a little 15 printed on it, and it says, uh, Made in Norway. It's this ugly little troll. Uh, got <laughs> my, my lovely wife got this little ugly booger for me at a yard sale. I don't think she paid much for it, but I'm sure it was worth every penny because it's just so darn creepy. Moving on. While we're talking about trolls, while we're talking about trolls, there's this beautiful thing. Look at her hair. Well, his hair. It's hair. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it has no... <laughs> I don't know. It's a troll. Uh, these are popular in, uh, I think, late 60s, early 70s, and they had a resurgence in the late 80s, like 90s. I'm, uh, Russ was the company that put a lot of them out back in the 80s or 90s. I'm not sure where this one came from, what year, but uh, it's uh, it's big, it's weird looking, and if you had it on your nightstand, it'd probably give you nightmares. But I might have to call this the Monster Bash episode, because uh, I got these bad boys at Monster Bash, and uh, they're like very, very, uh, uh, I don't want to say cheaply made vent dolls, but uh, they're, they're not very robust. It's uh, blow plastic, blow mold plastic, uh, heads, hands, and feet. 
cloth bodies with uh, stuffing inside. The rubber bands that would power the tension in their mouths are uh, long gone. And the only markings that they have on them is made in Hong Kong. Uh, I love them. They were, they, they came in a package deal. I bought the whole suitcase. They had two of these ventals and it had a, a Yugo, Man of a Thousand Faces, with like all of his facial features, uh, his uh, facial applic applicants. App but it was like $25 for the, for the whole, and I had to have it. Got a good deal of Monster Bash, a couple of vent dolls. They may be from Captain's Company, I'm not sure. I, I know Captain's Company had an ad in comic books and it did offer vent dolls. This is another prize possession. Uh, it's a King Kong shampoo bottle. And uh, the research that I've done on it, it it's like from the 60s. Uh, they also had a version that had a slot on top of his head for a bank. but. Uh, he still has his cap, which makes it, I guess, more desirable to collectors. But uh, I got this at a local flea market that has since gone out of business. And uh, they say it comes from the 60s, from what I can find out. And at auction, you can expect between two and $400. Uh, I saw one go for, uh, the current bid was like 174 175 And uh, uh, I really love them. And part of the reason I love him so much is I think I paid less than a quarter for him. I was uh, at this flea market with my then female friend who I had no idea at the time that she would end up being my wife. But uh, Mrs. Dredd, me and Mrs. Dredd were there. And uh, everybody was puzzled as to why I wanted this so badly and why I was so excited to see it. And I got it for, I think it was like 10 cents, under a quarter. King Kong, 1960. Okay. And I say this last but not least because it squeaks. Bibo. B I B O. He's uh, called a god monster. I uh, got him at Archie, through a catalog, Archie McPhee's. And, uh, he was just so weird. He has a little dot on the middle of his head and this little appendage. Uh, you'll be able to see it in the close-ups. It's just really strange looking. He has a tail and he's wearing some sort of a, a fur thong, maybe. Some little fur leggings. Bye, Bo! And uh, even though he's not that old, I, I've, uh, from what I've researched, he's not real easy to find in good condition. So, I'm happy I have him. I always love getting stuff in the mail. So, this is your friend Dr. Dredd. Episode 2. What's in the box? Get those wonderful I toys. hope you were interested. I hope you watched it. hope you drop a comment. Uh, check out my other show, Dr. Dredd Reviews. It's on the Monster Channel. Uh, check out Creepy Classics in the Monster Bash Convention near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, if you go... Look for me there. I'll probably be wandering the halls. Your friend, Dr. Dredd. Keep on collecting. Hey, Bucky. Cut that film. Cut that film. Cut it, cut it, cut it.